Okay, so it's towards the end of the day and I've been buying myself a few treasures and I always like to show you some of my more fun objects that I've bought, usually for myself, as is the case with item number one. Very childish, but these are such good fun. Yes, we all, the older people know what that is and possibly the real youngsters, but theirs are made of plastic. This is tin. Now, I don't think we've got the technology to rig up the lens for you to be able to see. You might be able to, but it's of course a kaleidoscope. And I used to have these when I was a child and I love collecting them, as a lot of people do. These are quite collectible now. And uh, I've got about 15 of them and they're all different styles. And I've even got some adult ones from the 60s where they were made for the people when they were sort of, how shall I put it, expanding their minds. And they'd be in a paisley case and they'd be so psychedelic, really interesting objects. Now these, I just, it just brings out the absolute enchanted kid in me. So always grab hold of those. I just thought I'd share that one with you. Um, again, I can't remember, I think that was four pounds. Not, not really anything. Um, something a bit more serious. Now, if you're, again, I've mentioned lenses before. If you're an antique dealer, you have to play the role and look the part and have big, thick amber bead necklace and eat a fish paste sandwich and have one of these around your neck. And I think this is a rather splendid one for 12 pounds. It's, I guess it's rather nice. It's got a nice bit of patination on it. And it's a, well, it would be called a, a a quizzing, quizzing lens, really, very dandy-esque, you know, but uh, not quite Regency, this one. I'd say it's probably sort of mid-Victorian, but uh, a lovely item in its leather pouch. And uh, yes, you certainly look the part, but it's all very well just to buy one of these to look the part. You actually want to buy one that actually works. So make sure it is powerful enough. This one is very good, but it's not super powerful. So it's quite nice to have a, say a sort of, uh, a lens with about four different lenses within that lens. You can really get close up to look at those silver hallmarks. But I love that item. I think that's an, a fun little thing for me. Um, now this, oh, I've got a bit of a posh on for these. This is a, not a flint lock, but this is a percussion pistol. And um, I'll put my hand there so I don't kill anyone. Um, it's still works, very nice, and they are perfectly legal when they're, of, well, a certain age and they're a certain type of percussion. Bit of a minefield, you have to know your, your stuff a bit and buy off a reputable dealer. Uh, this one, I don't know if he was reputable, but I know that this is a perfectly legal, safe object to have. And I, I love it, 50 pounds, it's extremely good price, that. Beautiful object, often used for shooting rats, poor rats. Um, that was off a French stall, so I think that's come all the way from France. Do like that. Um, again, that's probably about 1850, something about around that period. Now, what treats have we here? I, oh no, this is exciting. I remember I got this this morning. This, I do like early pieces. This is a pewter spoon. Yawn boring, you may say, but I think the history to this thing is lovely. It's got to be 17th century. It's got an interesting knot, sort of knop on the top. I, I don't often see them with that as such. You sometimes get spoons with a seal top, a flat top, and they have a, you know, they call it that because they'd use it as a personal seal. They sometimes have their name on the end as well. But this I like because it's worn at the very bottom. It's worn where it's scraped away, you know, for quite a long time, the whole life of someone possibly and it's got worn at the bottom. They do make lots of reproductions, but this has got lots of tiny hand-filed marks on it where it's been smoothed down after it was made. So I, I really feel this is a genuine piece. It uh, hasn't got deep patination to it, but again, I just feel it's right. And uh, I can't remember what I paid for that now, but it was really ridiculous. I think it was something like eight pounds. Lovely, something 1600s, ruffles, which find a general. Mm, marvellous! Really get excited about that. Um, and then what else? We've got a couple more. Oh, this is a little bit weird. Now, how do I, how do I use my biological words for this? It's a piece of bronze made by an artist. I bought about 20 of these, and this is just one example. 
it's a it's a part of the anatomy of, of a female and I think that's rather ex well, exciting in a sort of artistic way I don't know how she took the mold I don't know how she made it but it's very heavy bronze piece of her uh, of her uh, private parts and uh, I think if you're into unusual objects there'll be plenty of collectors out there for all sorts of reasons that would quite like this. Erotic art is actually quite a big area and uh, I imagine that would come under erotic art. Not sure I find it that erotic but I find it a beautiful object all the same. Fascinating. So uh, got the lot for £25. Extraordinary. Um, oh this one. I can't wait to show you this. This one's going to be my last little finale there. Um, but this Let's see what we've got here. We've got something else. Oh yes, this is just fun. Just for your notebooks in the kitchen. A bit of kitchen alia, I suppose you could say, or desk, desk alia, or office alia, or whatever. But just put your notepad in there, bits of paper, and uh, that's simply all it was used for. It has a hole at the top to hang, and also a bit of string for a pencil. There'd often be a slate next to these, and they'd write on, on a slate, you know. But it's Victorian. I just love that ruffle, ruffle sort of um, part of the sleeve. It's a nice piece. Again, they make a lot of reproductions, but hopefully you can tell by the patination. You can just sense and feel by just the way it's made and the quality that it is a genuine one. The modern ones are just so clean and they're heavy and they're badly made. Now, a little box of treats here. I just, very quickly, another lens. This one I think is quite early, it's a Georgian. I think it's definitely Georgian. The way the lens has been hand polished, it's extraordinary. Uh, that is a real little quizzing lens, that one. Very dandy. That's very much of the time. And uh, you had to really fight through the boxes to find this thing. And again, it was something like 50p, I think. I don't know what this is. It's bone. It is, it is bone as opposed to ivory. Some people will say things are, are bone when they're, they're actually ivory. For various reasons ivory is not the most popular object at the moment but this is a lovely bone um spoon and i don't know what it's used for it could be an it's not for ear wax which often is the case it's not for opium i don't think it's not the right shape so all in all i can't really work out it's not for salt i don't know what that's for but i just thought it was charming and it was something like again a pound or something in this box of rubbish and in the whole box of rubbish, there was this tiny locket here, beveled glass. There's no photo in it. There's no hair lock in it. But it's just such a beautiful object, the way it's been quality made. Often the back and front would be gold, but this is actually just brass. And with a, it's rolled gold, I imagine. But once these things are polished up, a little bit of velvet popped in there, perhaps, uh, perhaps some little keepsake popped in there, these become quite a desirable little object. You know, again, just a few pounds. And another tiny little spoon. I don't know what it is, a tiny ladle out of this box of nonsense. I love these miniature objects. Don't know what they are. Anyway, um, and that thing, that thing's just for your magnifying glass or your glasses. Keep it on a, on a lens. Great, so you don't lose them like I always do. And then my little finale, is that all my nonsense? My little finale, I do like this. It's an old radio, an old radio from the 20s, 30s and uh, made of cardboard. Now you might think, well, that's sort of quite interesting, but the best bit is this. Come on, come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> yeah, sums me up, really. <laughs>